Hi. So, I've been thinking a lot about what I want to put on this channel, as well as what I want to put on the internet in general, and YouTube in general, and um, above all else, honestly, just what I want to do with my life. Because I've always wanted to do science to the point where it is a core part of my identity, and I have always believed that science is something that makes the world a better place, and I think more than I used to about explicitly directing research towards areas that can, or directing research effort towards areas that can benefit humanity in a more obvious way. But I always think that if we're able to develop a deeper and more accurate understanding of how nature operates, we'll be able to leverage that understanding to make the world a better, more pleasant place for everybody to live. Obviously, it doesn't always work out that way. Sometimes people use, uh, you know, science for evil. And that behooves us to try to conduct research that is more likely to be used for beneficial purposes than for antagonistic purposes. But I don't know. I am not a doctor, although I do have the title Dr. Kelman, but of course I'm not that kind of doctor. I do have extremely minimal first aid training, but if you have something seriously go wrong, I will mostly just be calling 911 for you. And I don't know. Physics has benefited humanity a lot over the years. And I'm trying to think of ways that I could try to use physics to benefit people. And one way is just to, well, try to teach it to people and then if people have a better understanding of our existing understanding of physics, they'll be able to do that themselves. Another way is I could get some sort of an engineering job, and I could use that to benefit the world. Um, I've tried a couple of times to get a job in some sort of quantum computing or something like that, and indeed, advancements in computing have generally been beneficial to humanity. And, I don't know. I, in my sort of, if I could do anything, I would do something similar to what a tenured professor does with, you know, relatively secure funding and just pursue projects that I think are interesting and that, in my case, I think are likely to benefit humanity without worrying too much about rolling out any specific operational um, technology in the immediate in any immediate time frame but always with an eye towards somebody being able to do that with some sort of technology that'll actually improve people's lives and you know part of that is usually being of economic benefit but we tend to focus a little bit too much on that um but usually but usually things that are of economic benefit benefit people in some way but of course we've seen over the last well always, but especially the last 200 years, how those two things often don't line up with disastrous results. But with things like the climate crisis going on, it seems like physics might have a lot of solutions to offer because, well, our planet runs on, you know, sources of energy, power that come from things other than human muscles. Uh, and right now that predominantly means fossil fuels, which is unsustainable, and physics has offered a lot of, you know, a lot of the potential answers. Um, nuclear energy and photovoltaic solar power both rely on fairly recent discoveries in physics. Um, wind power and uh, thing, wind power and ethanol and hydroelectric uh, also rely on physics principles, although much older ones and ones that don't really differ from the physics principles used for fossil fuel technology. But it still seems like, you know, maybe we have something to offer, so maybe I should get involved in 
some sort of project to improve photovoltaics. But at the moment, nobody wants to hire me, so <laughs> I'm not going to be doing any of these things, right? I'm not going to be working on energy. I'm not going to be working on computing. And the only thing I can really do is work sort of on this rinky-dink version of education that I am doing. And that brings me to what should I do with YouTube? Because, well, I'm sort of splitting my time between... Well, technically I have four channels. I have this channel, I have a shorts channel, which is just, you know, stupid shorts. I have a, you know, sort of video game machinima and also quasi live action stop motion short films chat not like short youtube shorts but like you know short format films and machinima and that's really just for my own creative expression not for any particular practical purpose uh and then i have the one thing that i'm trying to actually take seriously which is a channel dedicated to just physics lectures and that begs the question what do i want to do with this channel because i'm not uploading the lectures to this channel but I'm also trying to decide on some sort of a vague style or direction for it. But I don't think I necessarily am going to stay in a niche the way I should. And it's because I'd also like to do things that are more on the sort of science communication side of things. Uh, but in areas where I have a little bit more expertise. Um, and that serves two purposes. One, it helps me review my own knowledge. Um, well, I guess three purposes, because one is just it's it's fun. Um, you know, it helps me review my own knowledge. It gives me an excuse to do sort of fun little projects. Um, and then it lets me cover any content gaps that might exist. Um, because there's, you know, not a whole lot of people from condensed matter physics trying to make the sort of science communication type content. There are some, um, and there's, um, some people from, there's, well, there's, there's more people that seem to come from the material, sort of the areas of material science that are very closely adjacent to condensed matter physics, but condensed matter physics itself is kind of the still the forgotten redhead stepchild of physics because uh, there's astrophysics which has plenty of ins inspiration and evangelizing and particle physics which doesn't have as much but they still do a you know pretty decent job and there's all the brian green types uh and even plasma physics will you know they really only have one thing which is you know their application to fusion energy and you know but even they manage to get some pr condensed matter physics we we get no pr and i I think maybe it's because we just know we can get money from the semiconductor industry so we don't bother um, but I, I think it would be good if we would so in the back of my head I'll uh, I'll be able to sort of be a you know be the uh, prime evangelist for condensed matter physics but um, probably not um, because of something that uh, is kind of my uh, maybe not quite my last point but close to it um, because well I guess I have two points one is that uh, this channel is not dedicated to any subject in particular, it's just my personal channel, uh, although it has the second most subscribers behind my shorts channel, although all of them are under 100, so it's not like I really have an audience in any of them, although I'm very grateful for the audience I do have, uh, especially on this channel, uh, and I hope I am able to provide content that is worth people's time because that's the most important thing you have in life is your time here on earth or just existing because now we occasionally get to exist outside the earth uh, in space um, and yeah I would like to focus more on that sort of science communication side of things but I like being able to just have these sort of vlog style videos that are basically just combination of opinion pieces sort of and almost like i don't know a dot you know a video diary type thing and that does bring me to my like 
I think, last point, which is about how, like, I don't know. <laughs> what to do about the fact that in one capacity or another, I am trans. And you might notice I look like crap right now. I don't think my voice really... I don't know. I My voice exists over a, <laughs> a bunch of different ranges. But I feel like I look and sound like garbage right now. I actually... I don't want to get into it in this video because I want to keep it short, but... You know... I don't know what to say about my gender, other than I hope it doesn't distract people from what matters, which is the science. Because I'll sometimes, you know, when, and people ask, you know, uh, are you a man or a woman? My answer is, I'm a scientist. <laughs> and, you know, that's kind of true, and it's, it's almost one of those things where I want to turn around all those people that make those jokes about, like, you know, my pronouns are, and then insert some, like, transphobic joke. Um, and I'm like, you know, my identity kind of is primarily as a scientist, and to be honest, gender is an afterthought, and to be honest, gen you know, science should be gender inclusive, and it should also be, you know, inclusive of people from all backgrounds. Um, it should be inclusive on a, you know, basis of race and class and gender and sexual orientation and everything. Um, that's actually one of the cool things about the scientific community, is I don't want to say that it's perfect, it's far from it, but it's, it's, it's not about, you know, it's not about where you came from, it's about what you do, and the scientific method it's not that we are erasing our humanity, it's that we're all interfacing with the same natural world and operating under the principle that it can be understood by all of us. And people still have biases, but there's a much stronger ability to say, nature is nature, we're all measuring the same thing, and... You know, sometimes biases do happen. But at the end of the day, science isn't about... You know, who you are. It's about how we can all understand the world around us. And it's really cool to have a community but one of the coolest things about that community is that there there you know pe people there are there are there are still problems i'm kind of repeating myself but it's because it's something i feel very strongly about you know i i even in engineering which sometimes you know is a sort of similar to the scientific community right i I, my dad is not a perfect person, especially on these issues, but even him, you know, he, he, I, I grew up watching him work with people from all over the world with all sorts of different backgrounds, um, and he didn't work with that many women, but he did work with some, and they all went to work every day and did the same thing, and they used the same, you know, universal principles of mathematics and physics and electromagnetism to go and design circuits and put them in a chip and ship a product that people can use um, and you know in some well you know in some ways depending on the device you're viewing it on you might be you know using some of that work right now because if you're watching this on a cell phone because that's what he's spent his life working on I don't know it's um, science is amazing and as problematic as everything can be, and the scientific community is is not perfect, it's um, it's often a bastion of uh, equality, at least in principle. Noise that I don't usually see in the rest of society. So, I don't know. Maybe maybe you disagree, but um, that's how I feel, and uh, 
I, I don't know. I'll go to my grave loving and, I hope, doing science. So I try to do education and communication and keep doing science because, well, I'm a scientist. So thanks for watching. I'll probably do uh, a more technical video later this week. Bye.